Hi, my name is Randall Allen Loy, and I'm an infertility specialist from Orlando, Florida. And I want to welcome you back. If you've subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe. Today we're going to be talking about advanced maternal age or advanced reproductive age. Next episode will be advanced reproductive age for the men. This time, however, we're going to be talking about ovaries once again and ovarian reserve, how many eggs are left. And a lot of women, when you hear the word advanced reproductive age, it becomes offensive to them because we regard women over the age of 35 as advanced reproductive age. I have socks that are older than 35, so I don't regard 35 as being that old. In fact, I became a resident about 30 years ago, so 35 is pretty young to me. Having said that, another thing that pops into a lot of people's minds when we talk about advanced reproductive age is the risk for Down syndrome. Down syndrome, first described in 1866 by Dr. John Down of England, is a condition where there are too many number 21 chromosomes. There are three of those instead of two. All of you know about Down syndrome. Typically, these affected people are relatively short, low IQ, some can be educated, others not, and they are at risk for heart disease and certain types of cancer. In fact, the risk for having a baby with Down syndrome worldwide is about 1 in 800. Currently, there are probably more than 2 million people with Down syndrome worldwide. A woman who is 20 years of age has a 1 in 1,667 chance for having a baby with Down syndrome. By the time she's 40, that's 1 in 106, and by the time she is 49, that's 1 in 11. Those rates go up precipitously. Now, interestingly, Down syndrome is just one of five syndromes that are associated with advanced age. And you're right, most Down syndrome babies are born to women who are 35 years of age and younger but we start screening at 35. And in fact, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends that all women who are pregnant in this country be screened for this and other genetic problems. So there are, in fact, four other disorders, genetic problems associated with advanced maternal age. They are trisomy 13, where there's an extra copy of a 13 chromosome in every cell of the person's body. That's called Patau syndrome. Trisomy 18, which is called Edward syndrome, and both 13 and 18 have some features of Down syndrome, but they're a little bit more severe. And it's rare to see a trisomy 13 or 18 baby live beyond two years of life. Now, two others. So there's trisomy 21, trisomy 13, trisomy 18, Kleinfelter syndrome, and that is a tall, eunuch like male. There might be mild mental retardation. They don't undergo normal secondary sexual development and only uncommonly can they reproduce. So they have a genetic constitution of 47 XXY. So they do have a Y chromosome but two X's. Finally, the last one related to age is called super female syndrome, 47 XXX instead of the normal 46 XX. So all five of those are related to advanced age. There are several ways in the first trimester to see if a baby is genetically normal. One way is called amniocentesis, by which a little bit of fluid is taken out from around the baby under ultrasound guidance and genetically analyzed. Another way is to take a few of the little fingers of the placenta called chorionic villus sampling, and that's typically done around nine to 11 weeks of pregnancy and genetically analyze those little fingers. Finally, the newest way is checking mom's blood for fetal red blood cells and fetal red blood cells, which get into the mom's circulation early, can be analyzed because they have nuclei in them, whereas adult red blood cells do not. So those are just different tests that you might consider as you go back to your OB. We know that women are getting pregnant at an older age. In fact, from 1991 to 2001, of 1,000 women age 35 to 39, that went up by 36%. And from ages 40 to 44, that went up by 70% unprecedented. The whole demographics are changing. Well, what can you expect in terms of risks if you become pregnant at an older age? We know that miscarriage is increased. We know that hypertensive diseases are increased, such as chronic high blood pressure pregnancy or maybe preeclampsia, and that is where there's high blood pressure plus spilling of the protein through the kidneys. There's also increased risk for chromosomal abnormality, as we've talked about, and there's also, and tragically, an increased risk for stillbirth. Now, why do all these things happen? Because as a woman ages, she's losing egg cells, a precipitous decline between ages 37 and 38, 
And by the age of 40, the vast majority of those eggs are genetically abnormal. So if a bad egg meets a good sperm, it's still a bad embryo. It takes two to tango. Quick story about advanced reproductive age. I asked a couple recently how they met. She was 39 and he was 26. And she said, I rear-ended him. And I said, excuse me? And she says, I was texting my friend that I just saw the most gorgeous guy I'd ever seen and I rear-ended him. And the cops came, but before they came, we'd struck up a nice conversation in a relationship. And he said, it's okay. What are you doing for dinner tonight? Here we are, a few months later, trying to have a baby. She says, you know, when you get past age 35, your ovaries start screaming to you. And mine said, have a baby, have a baby, it's time. I don't know if that's true, but in her case, it was true. Thanks for watching today. We appreciate your being here. This is the Infertility Channel. Please leave comments. If you have personal comments or questions, please write to the address below, and we will incorporate those into future episodes. Really appreciate your subscription. If your friends aren't subscribers, please tell them about us and subscribe. Thanks so much.